I mean, like one video like that I always watch in here, and it does come down to it, is this guy, like, and I, I do like his channel. I've seen all his videos, but this one clip, there's like a truck there, and he has this high-powered rifle, and he shoots the truck, and the door goes flying and, like, almost misses him. This door would have cut him in half. I've watched this clip on his channel so many times. Even though I've seen the rest of his channel, this particular clip where he literally almost dies is the one where I'm like, you guys hold on, let me pull it up. You guys should you guys should check it out. Yeah, I like that FPS stuff. Russia. <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like doing dangerous stuff in videos. Like, like I like I like for things yeah, to I watched your videos because of the dangerous, <laughs> bro. Like yeah. I watched it, I was like, yo, this guy, like we used to watch it and be like, yo. Yo, do you see how, bro, you blew up the car or like when you, there's like fire. I felt like you had to do that. You had to do more things to amp it up and take it up and take it up and take it up. And I used to be like, damn, like this week we got to use more pizza. This week, <laughs> this week for him, he's like using C4 on a drone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It literally was stuff like that. It was, it was, I wanted things to look as dangerous as possible while being as safe as possible. And there's a, it, it, there's a weird sort of diagram where it's like, oh, this looks incredibly dangerous, and I'm like, yeah, because it kind of is. And then, but but you don't want everything. You don't want them to be even, right? You don't want to be like a 50-50 overlap. We're like, yeah, it looks dangerous because it is incredibly dangerous. I tried to like, it should try look to more do dangerous than it really is. It should look more dangerous than it really is. Um, no, there were that car times. door. That car door is one of the crazy. <clears throat> is it a car bro. door? I'm mixing it up with a yeah. yeah, it's, it's like the pickup truck in the fuck. Well, I remember both like, like you're, you're 100 it's both insane, of those happened, bro. Um, the, the refrigerator door came back and uh and took Scotty out. Um, let's see, I'm wearing a chive shirt. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I remember something. Was blowing up Look at his little arm! <laughs> How adorable your neck is in that one. The uh, yo, this is, oh, this is this is happening. Yo, that is crazy, bro. You couldn't put the every TNT time where you, or the 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 hell is it called that binary? Card. Yeah, so every so what time happened, that is so to me, dude. That is yeah, so. The, the reason that happened, Woody was about to say it, but um, uh, I usually hung the explosives, the Tannerite, from the rear view mirror, so they're centralized in the cabin of the truck, and they're also easy to hit. And this car, that truck, did not have a rear view mirror because I'd gotten it from like a junk lot or something, and so it had to be attached to like the oh shit handle on the passenger side, and uh, and so it's just right against the back of the door and it created a shaped charge that's how shape charges work you've got explosives on one side and on the other side you've got a flat piece of metal and they the, obviously the explosive mm. like sends that metal forward to like do damage it's it's how like lots of like weapons of war are built claymores are somewhat built like that lots of like armor piercing like munitions are built that way but in this case we sent a truck door back at me at the speed of light Bro, I watch it <laughs> once a month. I watch it once a month, literally. I'm like, yo, this guy didn't almost just die. He almost got cut in half by mangled steel. It would have been pretty rough. Um, it could have killed yeah. me for sure. It could have maimed me a little. Um, I kind of wish it had hit me, but like not injured me too badly. <laughs> like, like if it had like hit me and sent and like 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 blunt impact, like like the edges don't hit me. Like if it, if it just like hits me flat and like knocks me on my ass and I like pop back up, like oh that kind of hurt. I think that would have been even well, more. At that point, it's slicing by a real close and just yeah. giving you a badass scar. Give me one of those. <laughs> and your bloody face, you're like, have a nice day. I oh, I had totally well. done it. <laughs> I had totally good. done it. I think that if you got hurt, it would have been hard to land future sponsors. That it would have gone so viral. That's a sponsored video, by the way. There's a reason I'm wearing a chive shirt. <laughs> <laughs> this an like irresponsible gun owner thing would like give you so much attention. Well, he's standing like 15 way. feet. From the fucking truck. I'm real close to that truck. <laughs> He's so Are you? close to the truck. Oh yeah, we're close. As, I like as I, I like. I'm, I could be uh, kind of a pussy with certain things. I would have stood further away from him holding the gun than he was from the truck. <laughs> like he was like in there, but that was part of it. It was like that was the aspect you knew. No, so, like that's that's how you like that's how you take it. Like that's where you go with it. And yeah, like, and that, that clip I, is I, insane to me. And I oh. also like the framing, you know, of the shot, right? Where you've got like just enough, you got all of me like waist to head filling the left side of the, the, the frame. And then that truck is, we're so close that it's filling the rest of the frame. So when you get a big pop, it just like, 
it's a cool visual. That's that, that's what I always we would. That's what like I would move closer. I'm sure we could have gotten an expensive lens that would have accomplished all of this. But uh, but no, <laughs> I was I was like, we're using a big ass Panasonic 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 with zoom on it, and it's just is like that Gator. Is that Gator holding it? Yeah, it's Gator. Oh, He's actually, right next to you. Actually, that day I had hired. <laughs> I a, imagine uh, it goes through his legs, and he doesn't move either. It's just screw his legs. I've got a full crew that day, actually. I've got um I've got like a I had hired like a five thousand dollar per day uh production crew with a high speed camera. There's high speed footage of that somewhere. Um like like, like I don't know, maybe two thousand frames per second, three thousand frames per second, something like that. And uh they had never filmed with me before. These guys were like semi local and went after they're all very professional, they didn't say shit. And now that I know there's <laughs> two thousand frames per second, imagine just like a car door slicing your head and face off in half in 2000 millis like 2000 frames per second i would go on the dark web and be like yo you remember fps russia i got the <laughs> clip i got the clip of him getting mangled by a car door 2000 frames per second someone would have uploaded it for me like, like like let's get it going i wouldn't give a shit like everyone should see that it, that was that would have been so cool like i don't want to die or anything i don't want i don't want to die but if i'm gonna die let's upload that to my main channel let's get this 100 million views or something like that if i'm gonna die um that was wild though uh and it was but you know, like we did more dangerous shit than that. Like, like I, I had a cannon shoot right past me one time and cut a tree down behind me. Uh, we didn't upload that one. Kitty thought that I, one didn't look a little rough. I did always. I did watch your videos with the knowledge of being like danger is an ingredient in these videos. Absolutely, there was like an element of people would always be like, uh, you know, the the things like, oh, is it Russian? Is this guy real? Uh, then being like, oh, he knows how to shoot. Like he's good at shooting. You had that part too. But then there was like, I always believe that there was like three elements to make something viral or interesting on the internet. Something that made you have to have your reaction. Then another thing where you're like putting your hand on the mouse is actually Freddie Wong told me this. And then the third thing, which will make you share it. And that third thing's important. And so it was always like the third aspect was always danger was always a present ingredient. And yeah. I think people like we were talking about, like to your point, like people like that shit. What I did early on is like I reckon like I saw what viral videos were. You know, they'd be these one-off things, like like I don't know, chocolate rain or something like that. Or or one of them would be like, you know, like like some sort of natural disaster, something like that. And I was like, there's these videos, they get like a hundred million views, like they all have some commonalities in them. Like, like, like if you could just do that every week, like that could be a career. If you could just if you knew how to make a viral video at will like like that's a thing so i thought that like the mystery of the character was interesting i thought that um it being dangerous was a was definitely going going to always have to be a component of it it being short li like none of this 10 20 minutes short trip. was a big deal back then short was like i looked at like like before i put up like that was our most popular video fast food lasagna at the time i was like bro this is five and a half minutes Bro, five and a half minutes. People aren't watching YouTube for hours, bro. We can't do five and a half minutes. Now I sit down, and I look at a video, it's like eight minutes. I'm like too short. Yeah. I, I felt like if you could squeeze everything into five minutes, you had a fucking home run. If you had five minutes of just nonstop, like if you could squeeze in some jokes, if you could make the person laugh, gasp, and and then fucking like re rewind a little and watch a thing for a second time. Like those were big components to me. Uh, I was, I was, I was like, all right, we got to get a, get as many jokes as we can in there. At least one of them will be funny. <laughs> we got to, we got to have something in there where they're just like, oh, 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 okay. And then we got to have one moment where they're just like, hang on, I got to see that again. I, I think the refrigerator door thing, um, that one was uh, silly. And every time something bad happened, it was a product of failures that that were a little bit out of my hands. Where I could and I could have prevented them, but like it was it was a sort of like the show must go on kind of thing that happened where like the refrigerator door thing that happened because um, the explosives that I had were supposed to work with shotguns, but they just weren't working. And we were making a video with a Sega 12 shotgun, a, you know, a, a Russian fully automatic shotgun trying to blow up this. Uh, I was think I had a red dot. Um, didn't work. I don't remember exactly what it okay. was, but you're, you're thinking of in the red, uh, and uh, and and it wasn't working. It, it wasn't working with the shotgun. I think it was. Uh, I think it was Tannerite's um, low velocity stuff. I think I had some of that. It, anyway, it wasn't working, 
And, uh, and so I had my, my friend with a rifle and what he was going to do is like, when I fire the shotgun shot, he's going to time it just right. He's going to hit it with a rifle and we get the visual of the shotgun blowing the door up. And, uh, he had been drinking apparently. I didn't know that, but <laughs> I go, I go boom. And then he goes pow. And then it blows up. And I'm just like, well, we just blew the door up. I only had the one door, you know? And, and, and he's like, God damn it, Kyle. I'm sorry, man. I, I should have told you I had a couple beers before I, I was in, you know, I, I was at my house when you came and got me and I'd had a few and I'm like, we should probably should have said something, man. You're back behind me with a rifle. <laughs> and he's just like, Well, I wasn't going to hit you. I was like, right, I guess not. I was like, what are we going to do now? I was like, we got like an hour of sun left. He's like, I got an old refrigerator at the house. Y'all can have that. And so, we took his old refrigerator out in the field and we filmed with that same technique, um, different shooter behind the rifle who could get the timing right because they were fucking sober. <laughs> and uh, and when it when it went off, you know, it's a fucking refrigerator and we're so close to it. And a big chunk of like bendy sharp steel just hit Scott right in the fucking leg. And um, I don't know, it makes the video better. I'm glad it, nobody really got hurt. He got a few stitches. It was all good. But, uh, you know, that, that video went extra viral because he got hurt. Uh, so, you know, nothing, no, you know, it went fine. I thought sure, yeah. worth it. All the injuries Eight were degrees. because of stuff like that though. I don't think there was any, I had some little injuries, like, like, like nothing to even like speak of, but like I had bullets, like ricochets come back and hit me and like draw a little blood. Um, I had a 50 cal round come straight back at me and hit me in the chest one time. And I looked down and it's just there. And I, it's just like, <laughs> it's a 50 caliber bullet. Like I had been like Were you shooting. wearing anything thick, like a coat? I was wearing an FPS Russia shirt. <laughs> Professional <laughs> Russian t-shirts. Like, <laughs> they're still for sale, like maybe. Yeah, they're bulletproof, by the way. Get one. <laughs> Especially in law enforcement, it'll it's save you. Good I, that's not a true thing. But I, I'm like shooting like con pressurized concrete was bup, 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 and this armored round comes straight back like a tennis ball or something. And I feel it and I like look, I'm but I just keep filming, and when we're done filming, I'm just like Here's one of the bullets, guys. And they're like, where'd you get that? I'm like, it just hit me in the fucking chest. It came back and hit me. And then another time we were shooting frangible bullets. These are bullets that are meant for like, specifically things like if you're uh, an air marshal and you're going to have to shoot a gun in an airplane, they're, they take a very fine copper powder and like denim and they compress them into a bullet. And that way it'll like go into a person and kill them. But even if it were to go through them, if it were to hit something hard, like the fuselage of a plane, it just goes poof. It's also, like if, they're target friendly. Like if if you were to shoot a lot of rounds, it pierce your targets and damage the thing you're shooting at, like at an indoor range. Yeah, I know. When I went to New Jersey and they required frangible ammo because they didn't want anyone busting up their targets. Yeah, that's usually because they've got cheap steel for their targets. Um, now, armor piercing rounds, they'll fuck up even the best armored steel. But uh, um, but like regular full metal jacket, they, they, you're fine. But um, I, I had two versions of this stuff. I had handgun. And the handgun stuff, you could you could walk right up to a steel target and go ping, ping, ping. And I mean, the barrel is this far from the target, which means that I'm this far from the target. And I'm just going ping, 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 ping with a 1911. And the bullet's going poof. And it feels like sand hitting you at like kind of high velocity. It, it, it barely stings. It's cool. It's like, oh, my God, this is so cool and safe. And uh, and so I filmed that. And then the, I'm like, give me the AR-15 version, the 556 five, stuff. And we slap that in an AR. And I'm... I just start approaching a target while like dumping a magazine. I'm just like ping, 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 as I walk closer and closer and closer to the target. And at some point I got too close and the splatter shoots me in the crotch and it just shoots fragments all in my, like it didn't hit my dick, but it hits both of my inner thighs. And I finish filming the video, like camera turns off and I pull my pants down to my ankles and like roll my boxers up and my thighs are just bleeding because there's just bullets all in my fucking inner thighs. Um, and then one time when we were shooting the minigun, um, and I was like holding it like fucking Jesse Ventura from, from predator, uh, one of the bullets exploded in the belt feeder next to my thigh. And I thought I was legitimately shot. Um, and sure. when I, when I, we finished filming and I like dropped my pants again and it looked like a cigar burn on my inner thigh because it had exploded and just like went through my pants and then kept sizzling in against my skin, but it didn't like penetrate me. But I thought I was, I thought I might be dying on that one. Cause we were so far from help. But other than that, it was mostly like a few close calls here and there. Are we I ready watched to watch it in this quarter, together? Yeah, I just watched it in quarter yeah. speed to like get a. Do you want to do that good. together? Quarter speed, um, everybody? If you start at 
22 how do do, seconds. How do you do quarter speed? Click the gear, go to speed, and click point two five. Oh, cool. Yeah. Are we ready? Yeah, from 22 seconds. Ready, set, play. It's going well so far. And his leg is gone. Look at the blood. Blood on the lens. Blood on his pants. Blood in the air. It's, it's gushing. I blew my leg off. Oh, shit. Does he just have one leg today? I... Uh, I would no way they found it to put it back on. I mean, they found it, but I don't... You, know, you can't reattach that shit. You know, that when I look at that distance... I mean, clearly Kyle knows that's ridiculous. <sighs> it's a lawnmower. See, all right, so, so there's a lot of factors, right? The Lay distance is important. Uh -huh. The amount of explosives that are in there, important. The composition of the explosives, how they're... The type and how they're packaged together is important. But the target's important, too. Like, like this thing is made out of heavy-gauge steel. Like, there are lawnmower blades in it, presumably, right? Like, like I mean, it, it's it's heavy stuff. A refrigerator's pretty light, you we know? I like know. Like, if you put an explosive in a barrel with a lid on it, that lid's going to go, pew, right? Farther and faster than you might have expected, you know? If, you, if it's a barrel with no lid upside down, the barrel's going to go, pew. So a lawnmower is not that much different than an upside-down barrel. I can see how it flew. Do you know in the same sort of like it's it's a, heavier it's it's it, it, lawnmowers are heavier gauge steel right yeah, they're yeah. bigger chunks of it they're attached differently there, there's there's heavy bolts and stuff in it's there it's almost designed to be propelled by an explosive in the way that like an upside down barrel is that's what I'm headed at do you know what I'm saying like it's got the little yeah yeah I switch yeah yeah and I don't know where the explosives were placed either that that matters you know if he put them on the seat of the thing he'd been fine. But it, I think he put them under it or something, like maybe down by where the blades are. I don't know that a blade hit him or whatever, but something hit him hard enough to cut his goddamn leg off, which is just awful. You know, it's the worst thing that happened. And and you know, there's and he didn't make any money. You know, when I I when I, I, I was blowing he lost shit a lot up. of money having to get his yeah you know yeah. leg stump fixed. Yeah, I, I was blowing shit up and getting paid to do it. You know, like like this guy's just like this will be fun. Like like. I, <laughs> There's no way, like, like, in my spare time, when I wasn't making of it, that I wasn't doing stupid shit like this. I never mm -hmm. would. That's crazy. It's like, no, somebody has to pay you to do something this stupid. He volunteered. Watching shit like that, it's like, like, to permanently lower your quality of life by such a huge amount for, it's not even, it's not like losing your leg in a war where it's like, well, yeah, I was out there and I got, you know, my leg got shot off, but I was in war, and that's what happens. You know, people would they still respect that shit, you know? It's like you were wounded. This, he doesn't even have a cool story. <laughs> the rest of his life, anytime someone brings it up, he's going to have to explain, well, I was being a dumbass and was standing 16 yards from a lawnmower that I was blowing up. He has to look down at that stump or his super expensive leg every day, and he just probably wants to punch himself in the face. God, I would not fuck around with explosives like that. Yeah, that that's stupid. Like, like if you're doing it for fun, you get way back. You get something between you and the target, and you don't, you don't place them in something like that. Like, like we've, you know, I've shot targets that are dangerous like that, but always from a long distance away. Like, like if we're doing it for fun, you know, and we don't, and the, you know, the camera shot isn't important or whatever. Like, like we would blow up toilets. That's incredibly dangerous. Ceramic. You were a foot heavy. away from sharing a leg with that guy. Uh, yeah, maybe potentially, yeah. It'd been worth it. It absolutely wouldn't. Dude, I'd have gotten a peg leg gun. You know how badass that would be? If my gun shot bullets? <sighs> Please. If your leg worth. shot bullets? Yeah. Like, I would have a peg leg and, and it and I'd like I'd I'd like pull my leg up and it it would be like the shotgun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have a pump action fucking peg leg or something, you know? I I I'd it'd be integrally suppressed. Um I mean there are worse ideas. I'm Googling to find out what happened to this guy's leg. Uh, you know, because I want to find one that's from, like, you know, two years later or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're talking about you, Kyle. Like, somehow you're at fault for this. The f ah. People. Of course. YouTuber FPS Russia is what we like to call here at CNN a bad influence. What's he <laughs> doing to your children? Up next after <laughs> 90 seconds of commercials. Yeah. yeah that Maybe don't copy the professional Russian with the tank. You never know. He might have an ambulance and a crew of 15 behind him. He may.
But who who knows? He never showed that on camera. So I assume it's just a couple of bumpkins from around the area who showed up and are and are yucking, you know, as as they watch the whole thing go down. <laughs> now that that happens sometimes too. The bumpkins like to show up and yuck. You ain't been here before. This is my friend Lamar's boy. <laughs> I, I totally went down you know there's pumpkins all over the country that would show up for that shit there were some in new mexico that showed up i got rather close to an explosion we did with a tank one time for no apparent reason you couldn't warn them off we we're like look we're about to do this thing and we don't have any authority to send you away but that that, that 88 millimeter anti-tank gun is about to go off and and, and, and that hunt that hut over there is gonna vaporize and the vapor's coming at you and they're just Going like, down. do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just like, do it. It's like, all right. I'm going to be in a tank. I don't care. <laughs> Man. Yeah, I mean, it would have been fun to watch. If I were around, I would have watched from probably, you know, 30% farther away than you were, at the very least. Yeah. Because I wouldn't want to get fucked. Yeah. That would suck. High risk, no reward. The way this guy lives his life. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was That was foolish. And, and, and like I don't understand, I don't know. He should have been farther away from the damn thing, you know. And 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 like, it, you could see what happened. Like he he missed it a few times, and then he got frustrated and like stepped closer to it or tried to get like a different angle on it. Like like he should have slowed down and be like, you know what? Wait a minute. Instead of getting closer, maybe we should get farther away. This is retarded. Uh, I would never. Couldn't he have like stood partially behind a tree or something? Yeah, anything. Because right? he's like right in the middle of that path. Like he's Rambo. Like, yeah. go behind a large tree or just go further away or just go home, finish your GED, and start <laughs> contributing. <laughs> you oh, know, man. Bet Burger King didn't take him back after this. He can't be a sous chef there anymore. Aww. He lost his leg, Taylor. Yeah, I know. That Burger King doesn't, don't play no shit. They got to get you in and out. An equal he can't be clicking and clacking back there with his, you know, <laughs> fucking. Uh, uh, the Paralympics foot, <laughs> always taking a little, like always shoulders bouncing up and down. <laughs> uh, it I looks saw like uh, he lost his leg below the knee. I'm not finding anything that says otherwise. Uh, yeah, and he used three pounds of tannerite. Is how much did you use for that explosion that uh, it almost knocked your leg off? Uh, but 15 pounds. How many yards were you away? I don't know. Uh, like, like whatever framed the camera up right, I didn't really count. It was all, you know, it was about making the shot look good. I didn't, not not about safety at all. And well, I was like, oh, is that framed well? Yeah, you got me, and then just to the side, the truck looks good. <laughs> this is our range. This is this is our range. No, I I I, I would guess. Um, I remember it wasn't that far. Forty yards, I would say. I would say forty. If I had to guess, 45, maybe, something like that. Well, yeah, I guess you were shooting a larger object as well, so it's going to look... Yeah, a lot more pieces to things to fly. Yeah. Did you have, like, a come-to-Jesus moment at all right after that, where you were like, this could have been the end of Kyle? No. No. Um, you know, it's... I... I don't feel like I can talk about this without sounding like I'm being some sort of fake tough guy or something like that, but no. It, you know, just, it, it never bothered me. Um, you know, I enjoyed it. Honestly, it was thrilling. Uh, it was fun. Um, uh, you know, I'd, I'd had plenty of shit fly back at me. I've had bullets come back and hit me in the chest and stuff. Um, and bullets come back and hit me in the mouth and stuff and draw blood. Um, we had a piece of refrigerators come back. You know, I, 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 you know I, I foolishly, you know, kind of think I'm immortal and that I can't be harmed. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that... Like uh, Morgan from Walking Dead. Exactly like that. I, I'm pretty sure I could close my eyes and walk through like a room full of buzz saws and I'd be just fine. I, you know, I'm just... Shit never hits me. Uh, you know, hard. I mean, see, I remember having that mentality when I was six. Mm -hmm. You know, where you're like... My mom would be like, hey, that Thompson boy up the street, he drowned last night. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I can't drown, though, because I see through my eyes. Everyone else is just an actor in my reality. Like, yeah. And then, like, yeah, you know, a couple of years later, when you kind of realize, you know, your consciousness, you're like, oh, shit, I could have been a Thompson boy. Like, maybe the lifeguard let him, you know, 
flounder a little too long so he could live his dream of saving someone. Who's yeah, to they, say? They do that sometimes. They Can do. They're a selfish bunch, lifeguards. Yeah. And there's also a small possibility, I believe, that I'm actually in some sort of matrix and I'm the only person here that's actually a person and the rest of you are just, you know, bots and as as non-playable characters. Know, that's not true. Just NPCs. Yeah, yeah you wouldn't know, could, though. You're, you're programmed to be a woody bot. If you wanted to die... You could have. You could. Have, you know. Oh. You know how to set up a car door so that it comes flying at you, right? Sure. Sure. But you didn't. I didn't. I. I guess what it is is. I'm not going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. But I'm always thinking like, if it happens, that's a good thing. Not a not so much of a bad because it doesn't hurt if you get hit by something moving fast. It really doesn't. Like I've been hit by ricochets and I've had like. Like, like I, I, I shot frangible rounds at steel. First, I shot these frangible rounds that were 45 ACP at steel at like point blank. I mean, an inch, the barrel's an inch from the steel plate, and they just poof, turn into like high speed sand, and it stings like the tiniest bit. And then I switched to 556, five, and they just splatter my thighs with shrapnel. And like when I take my pants off, there's like a dozen pinpricks yeah. just bleeding down my leg. And I'm just like, <laughs> What, I wish why? we could show this. I remember that. Like, he's like, yeah, I, what do you, I, I shot pistols and it's amazing. The 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 ammo just kind of turns, like it disappears. And then I did it with rifles and that's that's kind of an injury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. That, that's that and when we shot the minigun, I shot a minigun standing up, uh, holding the whole minigun. And one of the rounds exploded in the feeder. Uh, and I thought I was shot. It, it exploded and hit my inner thigh. Um, about that far from my, my balls, I guess, mm. but I'm shooting a minigun and I'll, and like $4,000 worth of seven, six, two by 51. So I'm not going to stop. That would be absurd to just throw away five or $6,000 worth of ammo. And we were all the way out, we're all the way out here. But mm -hmm. like when I, when I got my pants off after we cut, it was just a, a really big cigar burn. I, it, it, what it had not penetrated me at all, unfortunately. <laughs> but um it was uh th that was the closest i ever got to like really hurting myself I, unless you count other than the door. door yeah yeah the shrapnel was always god knows that would have fucking of, killed you that would have killed me there's no telling how many times like a piece of shrapnel went by but it was going so fast nobody even saw it was that a know, or it car or refrigerator door Car um, the refrigerator door hit Scott, the cameraman, uh -huh. and uh, gashed him open pretty well. But the uh, the car was that was actually a truck. Um, that was the one uh, with the slow mo that got so yeah. many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just as like tumbling, like a blade, a foot yeah. and a half to the right of you. Yeah, yeah. it looked. It, it was sort of a crescent moon thing of sheet metal just tumbling at about 600 feet per second coming back at me. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah. That, could, that was recall, a foot away from being the most viral video of all time. You didn't react yeah. to it at all. Like there would have been no protection, no like. I was slow. I was too, I, I've got decent reaction times, but it was already past me by the time I react and I whipped my face around. I would, I, I always tried not to flinch right. because I thought that, that that looked bad if you flinched, but Ooh. I would definitely turn my face around and try to protect the money maker. You know, yeah. <laughs> if if, uh, if there was something coming at me and uh, you can see me like whip my head around back to the camera because I'm trying to protect my face and my throat, but it's already been gone. It's like, like it went, it's, and it's yeah, gone. It, <laughs> the, the, the time scale that explosions happen in is not something humans can react to. No, no, not at all. No, not even a little bit. It's, uh, we calculated one time and it, it's about 600 feet per second. It's very, it's closing in on the speed of a 45 ACP bullet that that door whizzed past me at because they were shooting at, I don't know how many frames per second, 2,500, 2,400 or something like that. And we were able to like, do the math. If that thing hit you square, you just would have become a mist. I don't just think so. I think it would have cut me severely. I think it would have been a, a, a real gruesome shrapnel wound, like like where there was a big, big gash. Um, if I don't it hit you square, it would have just torn that right through the whole so body. That door has so much mass and like force. It was sheet speed. metal, you know. I, I mean, look, look. I don't know. Maybe it would have cut me in half, and like, like, like it, I would have been, I would have been whole. It would be like in the movie where yes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, ha! Huh, it missed me, and then I like slide, <laughs> <laughs> like Kill Bill style. <laughs> yeah, ghost yeah. ship. Yeah, I just I did a ghost ship. That's a good reference. Yeah, with a wire, mm -hmm. uh, the cable. Um, but but yeah, I, I never. I was always more afraid for the people around me than anything. I I I, in, I liked it when bad things happened because I just felt that's more viral. Because the whole point of what I was doing was it was the early days of viral videos, but nobody was intentionally making viral videos, and that was my goal. 
and and I just took all the commonalities from every viral video you've ever seen, whether it was chocolate rain and uh, double rainbow or you know whatever it was, and and I was like, well, let's just do that every week. Like like why why should that only happen to people who happen to catch something silly on camera? Why can't you be a professional viral video maker? Yeah, and to me that was danger and stupidity and silliness and jokes. Do you think that your trouble with the uh, your recent troubles with the law were related to your uh, visibility level from a YouTube channel? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, they wouldn't have made nearly as big of a deal of it uh, if they didn't all know who I was already and already have it out for me. I was uh, I was in the process of making my own uh, binary explosive and uh, starting up making videos again to market that binary explosive right to civilians. So I'd already, I had all the licensing already done. I had the federal explosive license. I've still got an explosives bunker. There's nothing in it. And, uh, <laughs> um, Not without so, a warrant, there isn't bitches. Yes. <laughs> you don't need one would it. There's nothing in it. I already checked. <laughs> <I already> checked. <laughs> he says, come and get it, assholes. <laughs> yeah. They were so happy that there was nothing in it. When, when eight, like the day after I got out of jail, not prison, uh, the ATF came by and they're like, hey, um, you know, we're, we're here to like inspect the bunker. He's like, there's nothing in it, is there? And I'm like, nope. He goes, great and fist bumps me because <laughs> like he's worried about me and his paperwork that might that might be down the road if, if they're if it's full of like explosives and, and detonators and stuff like that which it would have been in another six months or so hmm. yeah so they didn't like that they didn't because the one of the re, one of the things that always brought me onto the radar of the atf and and uh caused problems with me and them was the proliferation of tannerite binary explosives the stuff i would shoot and it would go boom um, you know, Dan Tanner up in Oregon, so it's named after him. He runs the company, he makes it. And he would send me enormous amounts of it for free because I was such good advertising for it. You know, he, he was like, I was going to visit him one time to shoot some stuff. And he's like, you can have as much Tannerite as you can carry. Someone bought a truck, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and we just, it, we drove from, um, Oregon to Atlanta with an entire truckload of explosives in the bag. You know, it, there was it's, another it's, thing you, I think you liked even more. Was it called red dot? How close am I? Oh yeah. I, I was working with a guy down in Tampa who had come up with his own binary explosive. Uh, I was a, I was a half owner of that company for a long time and it's, um, uh, I won't give him any free advertising now, but, but it, <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's low velocity binary explosive, which means it's, it has a sensitizing agent. Um, it had, uh, it had some of the ingredients that are in, um, like rocket fuel in it very hot stuff literally literally and figuratively like like not only did it burn hot when it went off but it also was very powerful uh, in the order of 22 times more powerful per volume um than tannerite was because like a pound of tannerite i'm gonna blow your hand clean off but it's not gonna do much to a car it takes about 13 or 14 pounds of tannerite to take a car out but this stuff it's like oh you got a pound of it the car is going bye bye there's a video where i shoot 22 pounds of that stuff with 10 <laughs> gallons of diesel fuel taped to either side. And the mushroom cloud is in the order of 250 feet tall. And the crater is <laughs> about two and a half feet deep by about eight feet wide, you know, and, and, and you know, it, we, it was outrageous where well, I just, I'll never forget where on my tailgate mixing it because it's a binary. You mix in two components together. Now it's activated. Now it's shock sensitive. Not just bullet sensitive, because that's what Tannerite is. So you got to be going, the rifle round has to be going 2,200 feet per second, which is kind of standard rifle velocity. But this stuff is, it's, and it's, he's not a it's scientist. It's like hammer sensitive. It's hammer sensitive. It's also spark sensitive, right? which is a new if thing. If you get a us. little bit left in the tailgate and you close it too hard. If it were in the latch, it would go pop. Yeah. Right. It would be like one of those throw and pop things on the ground. So like we're mixing this stuff up put it in a cardboard box and we're duct taping a five gallon can, can of gasoline to one side, five gallon can of diesel fuel to the other. It gives you a nice mixture between bright yellow fire and dark orange with smoke when you mix the two. So <laughs> duct taping it together and Jeremy goes, how bad will this fuck us up if it went off? And I'm just like, if this went off, don't worry. Yeah. You'll never know it happened. Yeah. You'll feel a thing. <laughs> like we're in pieces. Like 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 we're in pieces. We're disintegrated. Like like they're gonna scoop us up if this goes off. <laughs> or not. Like yeah. you don't scoop up 
jello from the ground you just leave it unfortunately, there unfortunately they do they would literally come and really? like scoop yeah the yeah that's oh, what a terrible job for the the scooper you know we were looking into this the other day uh crime scene cleanup and uh we were discussing like one of us said i bet that's a really well-paid position because it's so awful nobody would want to do it and right. i was like you know i bet those guys get paid dog shit. i bet that is the bottom of the totem pole job that nobody wants and we googled it and they make like 40 grand a year the There's guys no, who have to go the into your man. the guys who have to go into homes where an old man died in the tub and liquefied like i, I literally read like a, a description he's like the guy's testicles had swollen so large we had to puncture them with a needle to drain them i'll never forget that smell i had to burn all my clothes and i'm like this is a guy making forty thousand dollars a year he could just be a teacher i would have been <laughs> wrong yeah no i would have thought your friends were right i, I huh yeah, because I it's and there's maybe some specialized expertise in there, right? You know how to handle the, the bloated testicles is not something everyone knows how to do. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, just getting blood out of carpet. I don't know, you know, but like prepping a home for sale. Club soda. <laughs> all right, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor you so that's could... all they have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. but a bandolier of Lacroix. On and I had I had friend and like the the people who end up doing that sort of thing. Like, like I had friends who were volunteer firemen back where I'm from, but they're the guys who get called with a serious car accident mm -hmm. on the, uh, on the interstate. And they would describe to me, like they would have to shovel up like splattered remains of human beings and put them into these containers. And I think they go off and they get DNA tested so that your goo goes in your coffin essentially. And my goo goes in mine, but they had to be out there on the side of the road. These are just good old boys who are getting, who are volunteer firemen and, and, and they like to put on the gear and, go do all the practicing and run it, it, they're doing this, mind fun. A it's like fun. A, this is not the one i was just in but that i knew from a while ago he his first job as a firefighter a guy got hit by a train and he got given the bucket because he was the new guy he's like all right walk along the tracks and pick up the pieces mm -hmm. like, walk along and try and find all the pieces job that's worse he, than people oh ugh. shoot was there more the worst than people uh, mostly think is a tow truck driver i had a friend now and talked to me more from off-roading uh, and he was a tow truck driver. And you think like that's just hauling away from handicap spots or something. But no, a lot of times they're post accident and they're right there with the first responders seeing the bodies, you know, going through the windshields and such. And it's kind of a PTSD thing for him. Like he mess with him a bit to see the dead people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's no good. Yeah. Not they they should job. make a hell of a lot more than 40 grand a year. <sighs> or should they? What yeah, if they work straight for the mob, right? That kind of dead body cleanup perhaps could pay much better. Uh, obviously, that would pay more. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, yeah. What if they the see the $40,000 position for the government is an entry-level position, and then you find yourself a better employer like the mob or Russian mob or... Not even for the government. Like, like if, for example, heaven forbid, someone passes away in your home, mm. they're not going to do anything about it about the goo and the blood and stuff. They'll come and haul the body away, like the coroner will, but like, you're left with that mess. You're the yeah, one you who- Yeah, you gotta steam it. clean that. Yeah. Yeah, that's And you probably you have do. to move, because that would be depressing That would be fuck. terrible. And ghosts, yeah. ghosts. Yeah, the, the, well the ghosts and just knowing like as you're sitting down to watch Netflix or something, you're like, yep, there's the spot, pristine now, but the blood of that guy who came over, you know, or I thought my dad was an intruder. Or something like that. Like no, that would not that. that would be the that worst. one hit was, hard too. I was just trying to think of the worst possible thing. <laughs> God almost killed me like that once. Yeah, but why'd you shoot him five times? <laughs> <laughs> he kept trying to get up. <laughs> he was saying, "No, son, no." I thought it was one of them tricky burglars. <laughs> yeah, you don't get one over on old Cletus. <laughs> I was watching Channel Six, the impressionist burglar they call it. They <laughs> The way that your friends and family, the way they speak, I'm telling you, I'm not lying. They wouldn't lie on Fox <laughs> 4. And they come no. by our house, and then they impersonate them. And then they, then sometimes you, you got to take care of them. I like that they impersonate In this case, them. it was actually it, my, it was actually my dad. <laughs> yeah, but I'd do it again. Better safe than sorry. I'd do it again. I, you know I got my entire inheritance regardless. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> And that I was only it. after the untimely death of my own brother later that evening. <laughs> was Who was say. also an impressionable person. Yeah, I, I tell I, you, they broke into my home, tied themselves to chairs, 
And then <laughs> I had to defend myself. <laughs> I ran into Scott's house one time, and I won't go through the whole story, but it was that time where someone had been chasing us with a gun because we were trespassing. So we'd already been running from somebody with a gun that night. Uh, we were like 19, and he was 18. And I he made it back to his house before I could because I took a roundabout loop to escape the gentleman. And uh, when I opened the door to Scott's house, he's waiting there with a pistol, and he goes, snap. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? He goes, oh, oh, shit. <laughs> and I'm like, well, why? Yeah, like, that's... I, thought, I thought you were him coming in. I'm like, well, it's me coming in. <laughs> yeah. You should have knocked. knocked. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. I'll knock forever now. And, and then it was a joke between us for like, it still is to this day. Hmm. Like, even if like, we've just been speaking to each other and I go to the bathroom, I knock from the inside of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out. <laughs> <laughs> so a snap. Was there not one in the chamber? Was it a dud? Yeah, he he, he had a, like a forty caliber Smith and Wesson semi-auto, and he had not chambered, chambered it up. They were in the mag, um, but but you know he he it was aimed That's right at my easy stomach. Easy mistake to make under pressure. Area, not for him. He had, he has no excuse. I was like I, I was like you know what if I'd actually been a burglar? Mm, I could have taken that thing right away from you. From now on, always one in the chamber. Hammer back. <laughs> Locked and cocked. That's how this family rolls. <laughs> Pussy. Yeah, what and a bitch. She should have killed you where you stood. Exactly. Crippled me. Crippled me right there. He'd pro it probably would have it probably would have fucking killed me. I'd have probably died right there. He Hello, me. this is FBS Russia. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have like a weaponized wheelchair that I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That would have fucking Operating ruined this podcast. <laughs> all, your, <laughs> all your tone would have been gone. Just no, nothing. it would have been better because, like, if I didn't want to show up, I could just write a program. That was very humorous, Woody. Yeah. <laughs> Woody, I think he's asleep again. He's drooling all over his goddamn shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would have been sad. You're made retarded. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad he didn't shoot me. I'm glad he didn't shoot me. Um, me too. I, I bet that would really fucking hurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bet <laughs> that probably would really, or, really suck. Like many of the other deaths we've been talking about on the show tonight, not hurt at all. Instant. Yeah, if it was a shot to the chest, appropriate. You know, he was no, kind the gut, of like he was saying, like he was kind. I was He was aimed like dead center mass, like probably right where your um, what Sternum. do you um, your Sternum. liver. Yeah. Uh, right, right below your rib cage. What's that called? Where if you get hit there, it knocks the, the wind sternum, out of you. Right? Am I crazy? Sure, I'll, I'll just right. say sternum. Yeah, I can't think of what I, the word I was looking for, but yeah, I, it would have probably fucking clipped my spine and ruined me, or to bled out right there with a hollow point forty caliber point blank. Like I'm, I'm probably not surviving that. This ain't the movies. Plus, there's Kyle. That's a big scar. Hit the reset button. I bet that he just showed oh. up and like a lot. Well, since it's two twenty twenty, I doubt that they were like. Like th surprise this on him. I'm sure his legal team has been talking to theirs for a while, and I doubt they showed up to his studio and like slapped handcuffs on him. They did that white people arresting thing, like from the Chappelle show, where he like had an appointment to be arrested. That's what I did. I had an appointment. <laughs> I had an appointment to be arrested. I showed up punctually. And you were on time for your yeah, arrest. They don't even Wait, handcuffs on you. Can you tell me more about your appointment? To I thought they surprised you in the well, that's the first like, arrest i'm talking about the u.s marshals like, mm -hmm. like like when the u.s marshals are like all right show up at you know 10 you know next month and we'll we'll arrest you <laughs> and Where'd then you we'll release up? you uh at some federal building in atlanta um and uh that's when they like dna'd me uh like took a cheek swab and uh took my passport away like like i turned it over to them and uh i think that's about it as far as like, fingerprints time? again of course I was on time. You were late I, for a court date. I, that wasn't my fault. Everyone explained <laughs> that the, the prosecutor to, told the judge, he's like, just so we're all clear, this isn't Mr. Myers' fault. He wasn't fucking informed. Like, <laughs> I was not late to shit, Woody. Okay. All right. I, I'm fully there, confident Kyle would have been on fucking time with his, his Sunday best on for every one of these things. It's funnier I, to say, well, I was high. <laughs> I no. was, I'm a drug addict. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what you're I'm referring sorry. to was, I hit someone on the way in my car. Like, <laughs> what, what you're referring to in a normal person's life would have been the scariest thing that ever happened to them. But in mine, it was a Saturday that was rough. It wasn't a, a Tuesday or whatever. I wake up at like, I don't know, 9 a.m. in bed with my girlfriend, and I'm like, ah, nice little lazy Tuesday. I get a call from the fucking courthouse in Athens, because that's where, like, the, I think there's a federal thing there. 
that's initially where like the stuff was happening and then they moved to Atlanta. Anyway, um, they're like, supposed to be in courtroom? D, where are you? And I'm like, in my fucking bed an hour and a half away, yo. <laughs> but I didn't say it quite like that. And uh, so I'm like calling my lawyer and his people and like everyone in my legal little sphere and everything. And what it turned out was I hadn't been informed. My lawyer hadn't been informed. And the prosecutor hadn't even been. In, nobody knew that we all needed to be there that day. So it just so happens that they work in the legal field. So they're there, you mm -hmm. know. But wow. so so, the, so everyone is very understanding when I show up an hour late um, to, to this thing. <laughs> and like sure. and even the prosecutor to the, told the judge, just so we're all clear, like this man didn't show up late. OK, like I wasn't informed. His defense attorney wasn't informed. And of course he wasn't. So. The only re it was explained. Then by the I, I, rules of Georgia, you are free to go. <laughs> I wish. I wish. Yeah. But, that's but, how it works in college. Like yeah. if, every, if the professor's fifteen minutes late, we could go. <laughs> but yeah, there's double this. jeopardy. We can't get appointments wrong twice. But the whole <laughs> process of me getting ready that morning and then driving there was pure terror. I'm sure because because like you know I I've, I've been trying to like mind my p's and q's this whole time and now I'm an hour and a half late to like sentencing or something like a major fucking thing. And, uh, and and so I'm just fucking getting no shower. I'm, I'm getting dressed mm -hmm. as fast as I can, mm -hmm. like brushing my hair and fucking. Where's my belt? My good belt? No, it's yeah. not that one. That one doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I need a sturdy belt in case this goes poorly. Yeah, not my rhinestone <laughs> belt that says "girl toy." <laughs> I think I, I I think I ended up going with no belt, and I hit it with my hands in front of me like this. I literally like like couldn't find a belt. Like like. I, Clearly, I this find... awful postured man. <laughs> yeah, my, my, I think my suit and pants were slightly mismatched. Like it was a dark navy and a black or something like that, which is fine. But but like I was driving as fast as you would think you wouldn't get pulled over the whole way, aggressively, terrified, leaned forward on the wheel with her next to me, going, "It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right." And there's me constantly calling people, constantly, so scared. That was hard, at like 130 bro. BPM sitting down. You're so nervous. Uh, that sounds like a like, nightmare, well, man. It's like, this isn't my fault. Nobody That's told how Kyle me. did so well yeah. in the fucking fitness competition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just 130 BPM did, resting pulse for some reason. Did they not like <laughs> explain... <laughs> did they not explain the extent to which you weren't in trouble up front? Like your attorney wasn't like, hey, huge mess up in the scheduling office. It's okay. Like you just get down I here don't... quick. I don't think I knew for sure that I was good because I couldn't get in touch with him so either. He had been no, lawyer. See, he didn't know. He's in court with somebody else, or he's like, oh, yeah. he, or he's driving, and he won't. He can't answer the phone when he drives. It's a crime in Georgia. Your lawyer gets a fucking thing on. It's it's a problem, right? Like like you can't have your criminal lawyer. <laughs> so he's obeying the law. He won't answer his phone when he's in the fucking car. So I think I think some some of that was part of the deal. In any case, yeah, in that fancy car I bought him. But uh, but yeah, I wasn't late for anything. I promise you. Was there that any whole wiggly legal room? Thing. Like when they told you show up at ten for sentencing or for to to be arrested? Oh if, yeah. Like if you or your lawyer had said like, we are gonna be there. Can we do eleven thirty? Mister Myers has a dentist appointment. Oh totally, totally. Really, you can like yeah. kind of like stop and get a meal. Like go well, to the well, arcade. Well, see, like, like this, what I'm describing as arresting is like me turning myself over to the U.S. Marshals and they like, they take me into their custody, but, and they technically process me a little bit, but then they just turn around and release me. You know what would have been fucking sick is if you turned yourself in wearing like spurs. Oh, like chink. spurs and a vest. Chink, chink, chink. So they have to take chink. them away and put them in the box. <laughs> when I went to prison, that would have been when I went to prison. When I checked in, I should have had like lots of accessories. <laughs> a a bandolier of weapons. <laughs> so, that, so, that, so that when I'm released, they're like, rhinestone belt buckle, <laughs> two water pistols filled with SpaghettiOs. Yeah. Those, dry, those dried up, sir. Like, I'm just going through my random shit. And I'm like, I'm nodding intently and taking each thing and putting it on. Yeah, I uh, um, I, I was never late for anything, I don't I don't think, now that I can remember. I think uh, there was a couple times when they when they fucked up their information and, and, and I didn't show up for a thing, but uh, but I never messed up. But but yeah, the uh, the U.S. Marshals still have my passport. I guess I don't. I guess it's expired, so so no need to get it back. But I kind of want it back, but I don't want to talk to them. It, it makes it easier to get another passport <laughs> if you just have your old one. 
Yeah, why? I know it does, I, right? I think that's true, yeah. but I'm not sure why. It is. It's well, like on the I list think... of like, because I had to get a passport like a couple of years ago, and the list is like, you can bring this, 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 or your license your old and old passport. And it's like, damn, like if you don't have your passport, it's going to be a pain in the butt. Do you have, you have everything else like birth certificate, like all that shit? <sighs> Every time I need that shit, I have to find it, and then I, I got my birth. It. I have my original birth certificate. I'm looking at it. And uh, it got sent to me. I had it sent to me the other day. And when I went to tear up in the envelope, I tore. <laughs> that sucks. I could see that you guys was taking. What yes. you do? Was straight through the middle. Of the <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I'm, not... <laughs> I'm not paying this it. bill from the public records department. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, mom. Yeah, that's what I pictured. Like yeah. birth certificate. No, it's and it had like I, I tore it right at the top, like forgetting what might be in that envelope. And, uh, you know, I thought it was like an Amazon. It was a, it was a Manila thing. So mm -hmm. anyway, I tore the edge completely off my birth certificate. And I'm not sure if it's even technically valid anymore. As long as um, it's got as all the good stuff on there, I think. It's got all the good stuff, but it's a tear right through the, the you know, one of the edges is for an inch and a half is torn off all the way down. But it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'd like to get my passport back from those marshals. But uh, give them a call. Yeah. Hey, you remember me? <laughs> no we didn't I'm that, I'm that cool guy now, remember, though, remember the rad guy in Georgia like, <laughs> it's me I need my that my, tubular my fellow you were I was so about to drop a tubular we were racing to <laughs> yeah that, I love that 90s Righteous Bart guy. Simpson yeah that 90s Bart Simpson talk I didn't know it but Bart Simpson t-shirts were banned in schools apparently in the 90s I read that the other day really like, how, what a what a bad boy the, the Bartster was I guess <laughs> yeah. yeah back in the day like because the the Simpsons like early seasons like would almost make fun of itself like isn't it crazy how terrible of a child Bart is like look at him disrespecting his teachers and making sex puns at adults and then like eight years later South Park hits the scene <laughs> and they're like all right I got it it's kind of like he's kind of like Bart but they're like murderers. Like yeah. you know, they yeah. sometimes he's kill a people. little like, but we sometimes kill people. They kill parents, put them in the chili, and then yeah. uh, what the fuck is the fat one's name? I'm done bombing. Cartman. Yeah. Cartman feeds it to his his friends. Well, they had that episode, right? And mm -hmm. I, I guess the that's crossover? what you're describing. Yeah. yeah, the crossover where Bart's like, "I'm pretty bad kid too." Yeah, what's the worst thing you ever did? I cut the head off a statue once and stole it. What about you? Uh, I killed this kid's parents and fed him to him in the chili. <laughs> oh shit. Killed oh shit. I'm getting out of this kid <laughs> the Ken Bart character just leaves. Oh yeah. man, that's pretty cool. This one time this kid pissed me off like real big. And so I, I killed his parents and then I fed him to him in chili.